Okay. So I think as it's uh, two forty Geneva time, we can uh, we can get started. Um, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to our session on strategic priority three: multi sector integrated programming and collaboration. We're really happy that you can join us here today. My name is Elspeth Chapman, and I will be facilitating the session. Um, and I have recently joined the Alliance Secretariat and really looking forward to working with you all. We will try to be as participatory as possible. So moving to the next slide. Um, these sessions are really designed to kickstart the implementation of our brand new strategy by listening to you and getting your inputs, ideas and recommendations as we uh, embark on this journey together. If possible, uh, we would love if you could keep your videos on so we can see you, but we understand in some locations bandwidth does not allow. Please feel free to ask questions at any time using the chat box. And above all, we really encourage you to share with us your inputs, views, recommendations. Please challenge us. Our strategy is bold and so should be your ask and, and your recommendations. Um, so just in terms of the next steps, I will give a quick overview of the strategic priority three. Um, and then you will have two options. You can either go and work with our fantastic child protection minimum standards colleagues and input into the incredibly exciting work they are doing around pillar four of the CPMS on working across sectors, or you can join a wonderful group of colleagues from the child protection area of responsibility, global education cluster, INEE and the Alliance, to work on recommendations for further education and child protection integration. I will not give more details now as a presenter from each group will give a pitch for their session at the end of this introduction. Before I dive into the priority, we would like to do a quick Mentimeter uh, as a warm up exercise to get us thinking around multi sector and integrated programming and collaboration and also support uh, our CPMS team set up some of their group work. So look at the please click on the link and um, on and answer the following question, which three new sectors would you like the Alliance to collaborate with more closely. Um, so please select three. Um, education, as you can see, is not here, as this is obviously an existing partnership. And at this moment, we're just uh, doing the poll to get feedback on new sectors and to get your insights here. So just giving a couple of moments. We can only give one answer. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, apologies for this. <laughs> In that case, it's a tough, a tough call. You'll just need to uh, select the top. Okay. Okay, I think is that almost everyone now? Okay. Okay, great. So I can, I think as this poll um, comes to a close, we can see uh, a lot of, a lot of the top three health, food security, camp management, followed by nutrition, livelihoods and wash. So thank you so much for taking your time to do that quick menti poll. So as we can go back to the slide on the priority, Okay, so if we just go back to the PowerPoint, so people can see, fantastic. So if we go to the fourth slide, okay, so on the fourth slide here, fantastic. Here we can see um, the overall goal for this strategic priority, which is children's protection and well-being are prioritized within cross sector collaboration, including within multi-sector and integrated programs and across all humanitarian action. Before I go into the objectives, I would just like to highlight some of the rationale behind this priority. As you know, multi-sector collaboration and integrated programming is integral to achieving child protection. And as we heard on the previous panel, um, we also heard that it's essential to supporting the centrality of children and the centrality of their protection. 
uh, the multifaceted nature of child protection risks and the adversities that the families and children face as a result require and call for multi-sector and integrated approaches to prevent risks, to respond to needs, and to strengthen protective factors and enhance well-being. This annual meeting alone on prevention is really reinforcing this message to us loud and clear. As child protection actors, we must work together with other sectors to prevent harmful outcomes and enhance accountability to children and ensure their participation in all stages of the humanitarian program cycle. So this includes all sectors that we work with. With this in mind, moving to the next slide, we can see that within the strategic priority, there are four specific objectives. Um, you'll be able to read more about these as the documents, the strategy documents will be released online after these sessions. So I really hope you'll be able to read it then, but just a quick overview the first is about encouraging and, promote, and promoting increased prioritization of child protection risks, data needs and interventions within other sectors and as part of multi-sector and integrated programs, developing new and strengthening existing partnerships with two to three other sectors. And we have a great example of the work that's being done around child protection and education um, as, as an inspiration promote and expand the knowledge and capacity of other sectors to mainstream and integrate child protection within their programs and to expand and facilitate access across the child protection sector to capacity strengthening, learning and development opportunities focused on working with other sectors. And this is in line with pillar four of the CPMS. And also, as you can see, the focus on learning and development, which as, as was explained in the previous session, has an elevated status in this new strategy. So we don't have a much time. So these are the four interconnected objectives, which you can read about more in the strategy. Um, and um, we can now hand over to Susanna, co-lead for the CPMS working group for her pitch um, for the for the for the CPMS session. So over to Susanna. Thanks very much, Elspeth, and hello to everyone. Um, so for the CPMS and uh, Strategic Priority 3 session, I'm really pleased to invite you to join us. Um, we'll be exploring the linkages between this priority and a new initiative of the Child Protection Minimum Standards Working Group that aims to drive forward work across sectors to support children's protection and well-being in line with CPMS Pillar 4. So this session will give you the chance not just to learn about what we have planned for 2022, but also to influence which sectors might be prioritized. So you'll we'll look at that Mentimeter poll and maybe expand a bit on it. Um, to share from your own experience, what are the barriers and opportunities that exist to collaboration with other sectors? And to tell us um, from your different roles, what's the support that you need? What do you need from the Alliance uh, to help you to take this forward? Um, so the CPMS Working Group is really committed to contributing to the Alliance's Strategic Priority 3. Uh, we had the benefit of a preview and knowing that this was coming. So it's a core part of our work plan. Uh, we've got funding and staff to carry the work forward in 2022. And really the aim of our session is to get your ideas, your input, and to be informed by your experience as we look towards next year. So I hope some of you will stay with us. Thank you so much. And now Joyce will be um, doing a pitch for the CPHA EIE mm -hmm. session. So over to Joyce, please. Thank you. Thanks, Elspeth. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good, good evening, everyone. So for the other um, session, we'll be looking at the integration between child protection and uh, education. And I would say for me and for many of you, you may find that child protection and education are what I would call natural partners in collaboration. So in this particular session, we'll be looking at, um, given all that's been happening in terms of integration for child protection and education within the last few years, what are the some of what are some of the barriers that colleagues at country level, at field level, have been facing in terms of integration? And then would like to also hear from others in terms of how they've been able to address those barriers and how, what ideas you may have in terms of addressing those barriers. 
And then also looking at some recommendations about how we can enhance the collaboration between child protection and education in terms of coordination, in terms of program, pro programmatic interventions, as well as resource mobilization. So for those of you who may be interested, particularly in the CP and EIE collaboration, we welcome you to um, our session. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to both of you for those great pictures. It's clearly a very difficult choice. Um, so now if we can put the slide up, just so we can do a little bit of how we get there. So participants that would like to, um, to engage in, their, in, in Susanna and, and Joanna's session on CPMS and Strategic Priority 3, please stay where you are. You do not need to do anything. For those who would like to go into the session on CPHA and EIE, you need to work a bit harder. So for this, you need to move yourself into a breakout room. To do this, you need to select the three dots at the bottom, um, sorry, I never know my rights and lefts, at the bottom right of your screen where it says more, click on here and select join breakout room. And you need to, uh, to join the breakout room. I can write this in the chat. I think Jessica, if you could write this in the chat box, CPHA. E I E main. So this would be fantastic. Thank you. So this is the breakout room you will need to go to. So now we'll give a couple of minutes for people to move themselves to this breakout room or to stay in plenary for the CPMS session. So thank you very much. And if you have any problems, just reach out to, to Jessica, our producer, who will be able to support you move to the to the correct location. Thank you. Um, so if you could right. give me. Maybe, maybe in that moment, then I'll introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. Um, you were introduced to Susanna Davies, who's a co-lead of the CPMS Working Group. I work alongside Susanna. My name is Joanna Wedge. Um, I work for UNICEF as one of the two co-leads of the Global Child Protection Minimum Standards Working Group. So it's a great pleasure for us to have this space to talk with you about, as Susanna said, how we're going to be moving forward um, over the next several years uh, as the CPMS team to support Strategic Priority 3. Looks like people are still trying to... Yeah, I think I'll, I'll share the screen. I can keep, keep going. Excellent. Um, and then I'll see, am I, oop, <laughs> all right. Um, so before we get into the detail of um, our initiative, I just wanted to peel back the layers and think about what are the foundation, what is the foundation on which um, we're doing this work? So you've had a, a small chance to hear about Strategic Priority 3. Obviously, we haven't had a chance to unpack it in any great detail yet. Um, that will be coming over the course of this week um, and next month and, and in, the, in the next few months to come. But when we look at this, one thing that, you know, one of the layers below it that's contributing to Priority 3 is this Working Across Sectors initiative of the CPMS Working Group. And what is that based on? Well, it's based on pillar four of the CPMS. And those are the eight standards looking across the different sectors, how child protection and nutrition work together, how camp management and child protection work together, et cetera. But even be below the pillar four of the minimum standards, if we can go to the next slide, we see is really the foundation of, uh, of our work. And that's our 10 child protection and humanitarian action principles. Because really, if we're working to um, ensure the overall goal of the centrality of children and their protection, or particularly working on priority three of working with other sectors, then it's about fulfilling you know, the safety, dignity, and rights of children to assist in their recovery, to help them claim their rights, and as we you know, had so eloquently earlier today, looking at the participation of children in um, the work done in nutrition, in the work done in child protection, in the work done in education, 
So we just wanted to take a moment to remind ourselves that really the fundamental, the foundational piece for all of this work is understanding and, and, and fulfilling um, the 10 job protection uh, in humanitarian action principles. So if we go on to the next piece, thanks, Jessica. We wanted to also link um, our pillar four work as we come back up the, the ladder, so to speak, um, to the humanitarian standards and to the humanitarian standards partnership, because really humanitarian standards are a key way to operationalize human rights across a whole, the whole diversity of humanitarian settings. And when we look at human rights, we also include their um, children's rights, of course. And standards, whether they be the CPMS, whether they be INEE, whether they be SPHERE and, and so on, really hold us accountable uh, to children uh, and to their families and to their protection needs in particular, because they provide a framework for how we um, work with um, with children and with affected populations. Um, and they help us to uh, provide or ensure that we have quality and that we also have accountability. And in doing so, we see certainly in the CPMS, obviously the centrality of children and of their protection, but also we see this through the other members of the Humanitarian Standards Partnership as they step up to um, ensure uh, the protection principles are upheld through their work on nutrition or their work on education, et cetera. If we could go onwards, we'll look at the CPMS themselves. So when we look at pillar four, um, you have on the right-hand side, um, all the different standards that are part of the pillar. Um, we see that the um, in the introduction to the pillar, there is guidance about the different forms of collaboration that we can take with other sectors. We can look at the mainstreaming of child protection into health, for example. Um, we can look at joint programming, programming sorry, between the, between the two or more sectors. And we can also look at integrated approaches. And there's an explanation of each of these, plus a table to help you differentiate between the different sorts of approaches and which may be most relevant and effective in the context and situation that you're working in. Um, we find, you know, we hope that, and we feel that the CPMS strike a balance between having sectoral specific child protection specific interventions, advocacy policies and programming, as well as the integration or the mainstreaming with other sectors. And really what's one of the strengths of the minimum standards of the CPMS is that we look at this as being a two way street as something that we can be learning from health about how to improve our work and health can be learning about how you know, they can strengthen their work and, and make children more central and the children's protection more central. So it's a real dialogue and a way of working together. Um, the minimum standards of the CPMS provide key actions uh, for sectoral and child protection workers. And we'll look at that uh, in just a moment. And then of course, as you know, um, there are indicators, guidance notes, and further resources for each of these specific standards. And just to note that those further resources that Annex is, um, has been updated and will be released in the next week or two if you're looking for one place to stop and, and, and find further readings. We could go on, Jessica. So here we come to those common actions for all sectors. Uh, and there are five. We look at integrating child protection questions into our assessments, both sectoral specific as well as multi-sectoral assessment. And we know that there has been some progress on this in, in the recent uh, years. And we want to continue to drive that forward uh, over, the next, over the next period. The second one is around strengthening the capacities of sectoral actors to identify and refer children who are at risk to support children that they come across who are in distress, and then particularly to prevent harm, to do no harm to children within their programming and policies, et cetera. 
third set of common actors for all of us is to strengthen information sharing and our monitoring mechanisms. And hopefully we'll have a, a chance to unpack some of these in the discussions that we're going to be having uh, in the breakout rooms. Um, the fourth one is around coordinating opportunities for dialogue and messaging with the community so that we have one clear message or one clear set of messages and they don't overlap or, or have slightly different tones, etc. And then finally, strengthening children's participation throughout our program cycle. We go on, Jessica. We know, however, that many sectors lack the skills and the tools to fully center children's protection and to implement the, the minimum standards. And so this is why the CPMS Working Group has developed this initiative. We're about six months into a three-year initiative about working across sector for children's protection. And this is what we want to unpack a little bit and, uh, and discuss with you today. Jessica, if you could take us on to the next slide we'll be able to see the different components of our initiative. The first one is about co-developing with other sectors and other actors, a cohesive approach to promoting mainstreaming and child protection of, uh, sorry, mainstreaming and integration of child protection across the humanitarian response. So we've started to uh, map uh, the different mainstreaming and integrated programming um, uh, initiatives. We want to learn from them. We want to connect with them to have uh, a more cohesive and stronger approach. We want to be consulting with you uh, and other sectoral actors on what opportunities we have for uh, working together in a more cohesive way and what are the barriers that we need to be addressing. We want to obviously develop a common understanding about mainstreaming and integrated programming and a common language that we can be um, using uh, across sectors or with specific sectors and then identify and strengthen those key actions that we've been talking about. Um, we have started uh, and there'll be a whole session tomorrow on unpacking our one-stop website for working across sectors. Um, so we're hoping to add more and more resources there and to make it more and more interactive. And I'll give you that website address uh, at the end of the presentation. But we have other, uh, uh, other activities that we uh, will be undertaking under the initiative. Jessica, if you could take us to the next slide, you'll see that uh, we are about to embark on a series of evidence reviews about the benefits of child protection sensitive programming. The first one is in education. Um, so obviously we're working with colleagues who are in the other discussion group, but also we have the opportunity for looking at three other sectors. And this is where we're hoping um, your voting and discussion will help us um, zero in on which sectors those should be. Um, we've uh, drafted and we're finalizing and soon to distribute a communications and advocacy toolkit on working across sectors. So messaging, um, social media, um, images and so on. Um, when we look at capacity strengthening, uh, we will be developing e-modules and training packages for the four priority sectors, one of which we know is education. And as some of you, some of you may know, we have an education e-module already up um, on the CPMS um, e-course, and that was developed um, with INEE. And then last, but certainly not least, supporting country operations, particularly in refugee contexts. Um, and this will be done through technical specialists. And in fact, we have two job opportunities that are currently posted. Um, if you know anybody who would like to help us um, take this initiative forward over the next year and more. So just in the final slide, giving you some resources, some places to go. Your starting point is this microsite of working across sectors, uh, children's protection, so there you will find all sorts of resources, written and illustrative, visual. Um, you'll find video, you'll find links to that e-course um, uh, as an initiative as a whole, as well as by sector. Then of course you have our main um, CPMS resource page, and then also this um, uh, email where you can reach out directly to us um, for working across sectors if you have some ideas or suggestions or questions and so on. So that is our uh, initiative. 
uh, about working across sectors. We are needing your ideas um, about which sectors to prioritize and what opportunities we have, etc. So I'm going to pass the floor to Susanna uh, to talk us through the activity that we'll have together. Thanks very much, Joanna. Um, and I can I put it in the um, in the chat, but I can see that there are a few colleagues who may have just joined in the past few minutes um, when Joanna was presenting. So if you haven't had the opportunity yet, please do feel free to um, click on the Mentimeter link that's in the chat, um, and you can suggest there the um, the sectors that you'd like to see prioritized. Um, for the initiative that Joanna just described. And as you, you might have picked up from her introduction, we'll be trying to sort of focus our activities over the, the next couple of years um, on four priority sectors. We know education will be one of them. We have some ideas of what the others will be, but we're really um, curious to get your input. And um, that's something that we're kind of examining through um, this whole development of a cohesive approach that uh, that Joanna was describing. So in just a couple of minutes, we're going to give you all kind of the rest of the time and space of this session uh, to contribute to that initiative and to share your experience and feedback. Um, so we will be um, splitting into four groups to discuss the top voted four sectors in the Mentimeter polls. Um, and I can see what they are now. Um, so if, if anyone hasn't voted and you want to get a last one in to tip something over, you feel free. Oh, food security just jumped up. So I can see health by far and away is, is, is a winner and not surprising given everything we've been through over the last couple of years. Food security coming in as a really strong second. And then we've got camp management and nutrition um, as, the, as, as our tied spot for, for the third and fourth slots. So those are the four sectors that will prioritize um, in the breakout groups. So we'll have um, group one for health. I'm just doing it on the fly as you can see. Group two for food security. Um, group three for nutrition. And group four for camp management. Um, so you can see that there are group maps our, our group maps that the facilitators just put the links to in the chat. Um, and what we'll do in the in the discussion is, and you'll, you can see it on the group map, and I can actually maybe just share my screen for a moment so that you can see what it looks like before you get into the session, is that we've put um, we've put four questions for you to, um, to discuss in your group. Um, and these, we will, we will look at these, we will kind of use your feedback to, to inform our initiative. And I think as you, if you were in the session with Lyle this, this morning, you heard about how the feedback at last year's, um, at last year's annual meeting really dictated a lot of went, certainly for the CPMS working group, what went into our work plan. Um, so your feedback on this will have a similar impact. So please do be vocal and bold and, and share your own perspective. Um, so you'll be faced with a group map that looks like this, um, that asks you for the sector that you're discussing, what are the key opportunities to collaborate with this sector? It asks you also, what are the barriers? What are the things that keep you from working with this sector or maybe keep this sector from wanting to work with us as child protection colleagues? Um, and then we ask you what ongoing work should the Alliance link to? We're super aware that lots of colleagues in the room, you may be doing pieces of this work already. Um, we want to learn from you and we want to make sure that anything we do complements and supports um, the great work that you're already doing. So please do note, note this. And then what kind of support guidance tools are needed? What are, what are the gaps that the CPMS working group can help to fill that would help any Enable you to, to drive forward collaboration um, with these sectors in, um, in your work. So that's what we'll be doing in just a minute. Um, you will be able to choose your own group. 
Um, so if you, um, if you were listening earlier, if you'd like to choose your own group, what you can do is you can click on the three dots that are at the bottom of your screen um, where it says more and you, you'll see something that says breakout rooms. And when you click on that, you'll have the whole list of the breakout rooms and you can choose one of the CPMS ones that, that goes with the sector that you would like to discuss. So I see that we have letters instead of numbers. So I'll just say this out loud that, um, and maybe Joanna, could you write it in the chat for me as I say it? Um, so the CPMS A group, will talk about health. The CPMS B group will talk about food security. Um, CPMS C will talk about nutrition, and CPMS D will talk about camp management. Um, and then you've got the the different um, group uh, map links to to check. So feel free to start heading to those groups in just a moment if you'd like. But I see I have a hand from Anita. Um, so Anita, if you've got a question, please feel free. And anybody else as well, do shoot your hands up or put a put something in the chat if you're a little bit confused and not quite sure. Thanks, Susanna. Um, I just would like to raise something with you all. Um, I feel that often cash, because it's not properly a sector, but it's more seen as an approach, as a tool that we have to achieve protection outcomes. Um, does never figure in all these discussions that we have in terms of which sectors uh, to prioritize, uh, what are the areas we should focus more on. And uh, I believe it's, it's a pity because uh, um, definitely the use of cash for protection uh, is something, it is an area that deserves our attention. And um, yeah, I just wonder where could this fall? Because indeed, if we look at traditional sectors, uh, um, as we have just, you know, we have just done now a selection, and of course, we have to talk about health uh, and food security and calm management. Um, and so somehow we're never able to prioritize uh, cash uh, or to do uh, some work uh, around cash and child protection. Yeah, so just wanted to raise this. Yeah. No, I, I think it's a really fair thing to, to raise, Nita. Um, what I would say in response is that cash as an approach is something that is very much mainstreamed um, across the standards of Pillar 4 in the CPMS. So you will see, um, you know, key actions that include using cash, uh, cash assistance as an approach in the standards for food security, for livelihoods, um, for you know linked with linked with health and nutrition though those issues are reflected there um, so i think if colleagues have a particular sector with which they have seen cash to have an impact um, you know that can definitely be sort of integrated into into the discussions um, for the sort of purposes of of this session and for the CPMS working group we're definitely sticking to the the sectors that are represented by the standards but cash as an approach as well as social broader kind of social protection and economic strengthening all of these are are addressed in the different sectoral standards so the issues aren't aren't necessarily lost they're just not addressed totally separately. Hi all. I think some of us were cut in mid-flow of, uh, of our breakout rooms because we have to close the room now for the next exactly. session. Exactly. Um, so it was a bit it was a bit abrupt but this is the structure that we had so uh, apologies for this but we just want to say just from our group we just had such rich and interesting discussions and, and, and insights in such a short period of time and we will definitely um, be using this to, to work together moving forward so thank you so much for your time your inputs your thoughts and for joining us on this session. Um, and we hope that you'll be with us for our strategy journey too. So thank you ever so much. All right, so um, let us get started and hopefully the other pieces will fall into place, but I, we want to make um, the most use of your time um, and you know, have you listen to the uh, panelists that we do have as well as uh, get your ideas um, as we start to unpack the um, annual 
uh, sorry, the Alliance strategy. So here we ask uh, which sectors have you been, which you know, components of the protection sector have you been working in the most? And the vast majority of you who answered, only 10 though, um, our child protection um, with GBV and maybe in the Zoom chat, we'll see um, protection uh, being the other component. So that mentee stays open. There's lots of people in the room. There's about 30 people in the room. So it would be great to have a little bit more feedback about uh, where you're coming from. Let me first of all introduce myself um, because some people are just joining um, now to this session. Welcome from wherever you are in the world, whatever time zone you are on. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with us at the Alliance in our annual meeting. And specifically on this third day, where we are looking at our new um, strategy, our five-year strategy. Um, and this session is looking at strategic priority three, which is multi-sector and integrated programming and collaboration. Um, we've had uh, some sessions earlier today that um, looked at um, education and CPHA. Uh, and then uh, with the CPMS, we looked across other sectors um, as to what might be some priority sectors that we think um, it is timely and ripe for us to be working with. So when we did this exercise last year, um, looking at you know how should we start to develop a strategy, who should we be developing it with, what are key issues and so on. One of the key sectors that came across as people wanted to work more closely with was our own sector of protection um, and how uh, child protection works with uh, protection overall, how it works with GBV, et cetera. Um, and so therefore we wanted to bring the different actors together today to be talking about strengthening collaboration between us um, as we within child protection at least um, now have this exciting uh, strategy to be driving us forward over the next five years. So we have uh, about an hour left in this group and let me explain a little bit uh, about what we're doing. First of all, I said I would introduce myself and I haven't. Uh, my name is Joanna Wedge. Uh, I work for UNICEF as one of the co-leads of the global CPMS working group. Um, and I work closely obviously within that role within the secretariat uh, and I'm thrilled to be at the annual meeting and supporting a number of sessions, but in particular this one as we start to unpack um, the, the new strategy for the Alliance. Um, so we have about an hour together now, um, and the plan of the day is that we do a little recap of what priority three, strategic priority three is, because some of you are just joining now and haven't seen um, the, the new strategy as it's been circulated as of today. Um, then we're going to have a panel uh, from the different components of protection, um, answering some, some questions and, and exploring some of the ideas that they have. Um, and then we're going to be doing an exercise with you. We'll be going into breakout rooms in mixed groups. So from different um, perspectives, we hope, um, to look at some of the challenges and opportunities for um, working together in a, a more collaborative, integrated fashion. Uh, we'll come back at the end uh, into this plenary uh, to discuss some of those initial thoughts and, and any of the common threads that were discussed. Uh, and then we'll uh, wrap up and go back. I think there's another short break and then we'll go back into um, the main group for um, the whole uh, annual meeting. Super, uh, if we could move to the next slide. Thanks, Jessica. Um, so again, apologies if this is a bit of a recap for some of you, um, but uh, for those of you who are just joining us and who didn't benefit from the introduction um, to the overall um, uh, to the overall strategy as it's being uh, released today, or um, earlier uh, Elspeth had uh, talked in this same room about um, sector uh, strategic priority three, but just give, bear with us um, for a couple of minutes. Uh, so what we have on the screen is kind of the infographic for understanding the Alliance's new five-year strategy. 
Um, our overarching goal is that the centrality of children and their protection is recognized and prioritized as essential and life-saving across the entire humanitarian system. So we have four um, priorities, accountability, localization, prevention, and then our strategic priority three that we're looking at now, being multi-sector and integrative programming and collaboration. So within this, we have the goal that children's protection and well-being are prioritized within cross-sector collaboration, including within multi-sector and integrated programs and across all of humanitarian action. So we have a number of interesting pieces already on the go within the Alliance, within Alliance members that are going to be feeding immediately into uh, this priority. But obviously at this point, as we're just launching um, the, the strategy, we're interested in hearing about where you think we should be getting, where we, you think you know, our sites should be set in order to really have um, uh, change over the next five years and find ourselves in a different position and find children in a different position um, when they're in humanitarian settings. So let's be bold. We have a bold goal. Um, both at the overarching level and within the strategy. So, you know, calling on you to step up and to step in during these conversations to push us to really be achieving this, um, this goal over the next five years. So Jessica, if you could take us to the next slide, we'll be able to look at the objectives that have been set um, within this, uh, within this uh, strategic goal. Super. Keep going. Um, so there are a number of objectives, uh, I believe there are five. So the first one is around encouraging and promoting increased prioritization of child protection risks, data needs and interventions within other sectors. So in particular to do this as part of multi-sector and integrated programs. So there will be times obviously, many times where there need to be strong components of just food security programming, for example. But if we can um, weave in uh, through integrated manners and, and uh, awareness and so on, uh, protection risks um, and opportunities for children, this is what we're, we're trying to get across um, in this objective. The second one is around developing new or strengthening existing partnerships with two or three other sectors. So obviously, as all of you know, we have our ongoing work with education in emergencies. Um, I don't know if Rachel's on in this group, but um, uh, a focal point uh, between INEE and the Alliance to work on this. Um, and we just had a, a group uh, session on that. Um, the CPMS has a working across a sectors initiative that um, will be uh, prioritizing three additional sectors to education. Um, so look at working through them. So there'll be a number of pieces that come together, um, but these are all, except for education, these are all in their nascent stage where we're looking to you for ideas um, about which sectors to be working with and, and what kind of partnerships we can be developing over, um, over the five-year strategy. Go on to the next slide, we'll see the rest of the objectives for um, strategic priority three. Um, so to promote and expand the knowledge and capacity of other sectors to mainstream and integrate child protection within their programs. Um, so we have a number of opportunities. I was just in a previous sector, sec session talking about um, some of these opportunities and who are some of the key people um, that we um, need to be talking to. Obviously that will depend a little bit on what priorities, what sectors we prioritize, but we also you know, want to be pushing this beyond um, just two or three sectors where we can um, to be building, um, to creating buy-in and, and improving um, knowledge and capacity of all humanitarian actors. And that's where, you know, pillar four of the CPMS uh, will be able to help us um, reach out to all, um, all actors involved in the humanitarian effort. Um, and then finally, to expand and facilitate access across our own child protection sector, to strengthen our capacity, learning and development opportunities 
about working with other sectors. So we know that we need to have some enhanced skills, some enhanced understanding, um, some enhanced knowledge of um, the language that other sectors use to discuss children, to discuss protection, um, and so on. So working with on ourselves, so to speak, in, in terms of improving um, our skill set and our knowledge base uh, about doing integrated programming and then about specific sectors uh, and so on. So this is the overview um, of the strategic priority three. Uh, you will have uh, by now, hopefully, been able to see the link where you'll be able to uh, download it and read it and dive into all of the priorities, but in particular, um, number three, since that's the focus uh, of this discussion over the next 45 minutes. Um, and as I said, the next part of the uh, program has been to have a conversation with um, some of our colleagues in, uh, in the protection sector. Um, I don't know if we now have Honey with us. Yes, I'm here. Hi. Excellent. So I'm going to pass the floor to you to introduce the panel and to take, uh, to take it away. Fantastic. Great. Thanks, Joanna. Um, and thanks, everyone. And welcome. Um, I would like to invite Mary uh, from, um, from uh, the GPC. And Hello, I would Annie. like, hi, how are you? I would I'm like good. to uh, also invite Eric from the CPAOR. Morning, everyone. Hi, Eric. Afternoon. Sorry. And, after, and yeah, I mean, depends on where you are. Um, and uh, Jennifer Chase from uh, the GBVAR. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jennifer. So maybe quickly, just I'll invite each of you to, to give a brief description of what you do in, in uh, your respective organization for the audience to get to know you a bit better. Mary, maybe I'll start with you. Thank you, Annie. Um, yeah, so I work with the Global Protection Cluster. Uh, I recently joined, I am the lead of the advocacy and communication pillar. Uh, and just previously, I was for two years in, in Mali as the Protection Cluster Coordinator. Fantastic, great to have you, especially since you're coming fresh from, from the field. Um, Jennifer, I'll turn to you next. Hi, I'm Jennifer Chase. I'm the GBV Area of Responsibility Global Coordinator here in Geneva. I'm not coming fresh from the field at the moment. I've been here now for five and a half years, I think. Um, and uh, I worked quite, I came in almost the same time as Michael Copland came into the CPAOR and now I'm working with Ron. So it's uh, always a pleasure to be engaged with the child protection actors. So thank you for the invitation. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, yeah, and it's not not to say that one perspective is is preferred. I think the combination of of perspectives is always uh, um, appreciated. I recently was myself deployed to support the unaccompanied Afghan Afghan unaccompanied children uh, crisis in in Doha. It reminded me of how much uh, how much we need that that touch base with the field uh, all the time. Which brings me to Eric, who actually has the the opportunity to be at the global level, but also be very connected as a coordinator. Eric, over to you. Right. So indeed I'm based in Geneva, but I'm a deployable coordinator in the rapid response team of the child protection AOR. So yes, very much in touch with countries and, and uh, traveling to them sometimes. Great, fantastic. Yeah, I'm sure the role has, uh, has seen some changes since COVID-19 um, hit. Great, so we, I'm going to um, start off with, with some uh, just general comments uh, and then pose a question to each of you guys and then we kind of start the conversation from there um, on. And um, Joanna, can you remind me how much time we have? Just so I'm, I budget the, the time correctly. Uh, 15 minutes total. 15 minutes, perfect. Okay, so. Just starting from, uh, from the premise of, of all of these sectors that, that we have here, child protection, GBV, um, and the broader protection within the cluster system being, being defined as, as within, within the protection um, sector. 
Um, and it's, it's, a, it's basically something that, that we have from the IAC. Um, it has conceptual coherence, but when we come to, to some of the programmatic elements, we see diversity across the different, different sectors. Um, GBV has its own specialization. Protection work itself has its own highly specialized areas um, that a child protection person may not even know or be aware of or, or understand. Um, and child protection has the same thing. Child protection has very kind of detailed, specialized areas of work that may, may not overlap necessarily or have an equivalent necessarily in in uh, GBV work or in, um, in protection work, but the the, the kind of uh, uh, conceptual coherence is is very clear uh, of why these these sectors are all um, under the umbrella of of protection. Um, so I want to start with that kind of premise and 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 ask Maria um, to share some experiences from the field with us um, on how um, how protection sectors or sectors across protection field um, have worked together in the field to, um, to basically produce quality response uh, for the population. Okay, yeah. Annie, I'll, I'll try to reply to that first question. I think that uh, for those of you who, who attended the, the opening session um, in, in the afternoon, I think you may have heard William, who's the coordinator of the Global Protection Cluster, speak about the, the interdependence between child protection and protection work and how those two sectors are strongly aligned and strongly connected. Um, and as you say, for me, the best way to, to illustrate this collaboration is to look at, at the work that is being done at the country level. Because I think that when it comes to field work, that's where we actually see the, the true collaboration. Um, it is when we are trying to develop you know, those protection efforts in, in local communities, uh, working with communities who are affected by conflict and disaster, that we actually see a natural fit and a natural connection between our different expertise and, and sector. Um, in Mali, for example, uh, and I'm referring to that because it's, it's the most recent um, experience that I have had, but you have a community that is attacked by an armed group, uh, houses and livestock that they are being burned or destroyed. Uh, children are forcibly, forcibly recruited and, and women like sexually assaulted. And this is actually when all our expertise um, come together and then we are really able to, to pull the, the different strings of the protection sector and to, to work together. Um, and as you say, this is when the sector, the cluster, the working group don't really matter anymore uh, because integration and collaboration just comes naturally. Um, so from my experience, I think there are two um, areas where we work particularly well together. Uh, the first one is on analysis and uh, collective advocacy. I think that we, we are shaping the narrative together. We are telling the same story. We are ensuring that hard conversations are happening uh, on protection, on child protection, on GBV. Um, so we all have our different monitoring system and analysis framework in place. We do monitor uh, grave violations, protection incidents. Uh, we, uh, we also analyze the, the threats and the vulnerabilities, but in the end, we are able to collectively shape the, the story in country of what is happening to, to people and, and shaping this protection story. And then we are using this uh, for collective, collective advocacy. Um, so I think that's one of the things that I personally really like about the sector is that we usually encounter very strong and fierce advocates. Um, and at the country level, as, as well as at the global level, I think we support each other quite well in, in trying to lead on some advocacy initiative, trying to influence parties to the conflict uh, or people who are in a decision-making uh, uh, position. Um, and the second area maybe where I see a strong collaboration uh, is on community-based approach and localization. And probably child protection and GBV are far uh, ahead of us, but uh, we still, when we when it comes to working with community level and with local partners, I think this is where we have a lot of uh, common ground. Um, because in 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 many of our operation, community based protection is uh, is is the best uh, approach to protection. Uh, you know, working with local communities to support their own self protection capacity um, is very 
more integrated by nature and does not really reflect the, the humanitarian sector as we as we have it. Um, so I think we have many examples where uh, protection, child protection, GBV uh, programming is being led by the community and is um, is having a concrete uh, protection uh, outcome. Um, in the Sahel, the, the, the approach uh, that the protection, the, G, the CP and the GBV actor uh, work, uh, decided to take and, and they work jointly on, on that is, is really this community level approach. So you have like protection, child protection, GBV uh, commu com committees in, in community who are you know, established and they work uh, they engage directly with armed groups to negotiate access uh, to, they try to identify children who are associated with armed force. Um, they, uh, they conduct prevention uh, activities. Um, and in the end, they act also as a focal point within the community to, um, uh, to lead on all those protection issues. And so I think it is an approach that has worked uh, a lot for us. Um, and, uh, and it has led to, to concrete protection uh, outcome. So those are the two examples that I think are very um, prominent for me, uh, and uh, they are strong areas of collaboration. Uh, recognizing, as you said at the beginning, that we do have, of course, um, our own expertise and our own speciality, and that we need to keep that. But uh, there are some uh, common areas on analysis, on collective advocacy, on localization and community-based approach where we, we can build on, on each other's expertise and, and work. Thank you very much, Mary. It's actually great to hear your your um, experience from Mali because I think I was there about ten years ago, and uh, we actually had a had a protection coordinator who was, and I think her name was Penelope, if I if I remember correctly. She was a fierce advocate for child protection, and we had an amazing collaboration uh, with uh, the the protection cluster um, at that time. Um, and very, very interesting, the two examples in terms of kind of shaping the, the a common story of protection and the issue of community are um, absolutely um, spot on in the sense that once you start looking at what we are trying to do, which is all, all of us, our objective is, is very similar. It's just the target group that we talk about is slightly different or the air or the kind of the, the technical area is slightly different. But at the end of the day, we're talking about protection talks just does not only talk about adults, also talks about um, children. GBV is not just about uh, women, it's also about children. Um, so it's uh, when that becomes the starting point, it's very interesting how all of these kind of, um, the, the differences kind of almost dissipate and, and then you come to, to these uh, interesting approaches that, uh, that bring everything together. I'll turn over to Chase now. Sorry, Jennifer Chase, um, because you have your uh, your name as Chase there. <laughs> Not sure why it's like that. <laughs> um, Jennifer, um, so both GBV and child protection are highly technical areas uh, of work, and there are some areas of overlap and some areas of differences. Uh, could you share with us how the two sectors work together in areas in some areas, especially those areas that overlap with each other, to improve outcomes for children and their caregivers? Yeah, I did want to take a step backwards first and just say, um, if you, we also just came up with our strategy and launched it a couple of weeks ago. Um, it also took us close to a year. <laughs> it's also from 2021 to 2025. And I hope that um, those of you who are on this call will, will go to our website and take a look because um, I think we might have called some things operational principles or approaches, whereas you might have made them objectives. Um, but I think there's so many themes like accountability and localization. And um, we, we have one of our um, text boxes on the importance of children and adolescents. Um, there's, I haven't seen gender equality in my quick look through, but I, I think that's another area that um, that we can be working on together in terms of hitting root causes uh, that impact um, children as well as as women and girls. And um, and yeah, I just I hope you will look at our strategy. And I know it's a lot of work to do a strategy, so really uh, kudos on all the hard work that went into your to your strategy. 
And if I um, feel free to share the link in the in the chat box as well after after your um, after you're done, so sure. that colleagues can go there. Yeah. Um, so I think that gives us lots of ideas to work from already, and especially since they're ideas that many of you already said were priorities a year ago. And I think you know it reinforces what Marie Emily said about analysis. Right, like we have arrived at these objectives and areas of, of collaboration through our analysis of the field and of the needs and of the gaps and, and then maybe have different ways of, of addressing them. But I think also, as Marie pointed out, if we, and William, especially if, we, if, if we're advocating together, then, um, then we can have success for all of us. And at the same time, it's important to maintain our specialized areas. So um, I would just say in terms of the similarities, also I think it was mentioned in the morning session or at the beginning of this afternoon, whatever time zone you're in, um, that we have seen improvement in the narrative if we're looking at the humanitarian needs overview, we, we see more specific areas um, raised in terms of uh, looking at specific needs of children and um, looking at GBV and women and girls, and it gets mentioned a lot more, I think, in the narrative, but you know how well we're doing at actually responding and addressing those issues is probably not there yet. Um, I was also gonna say one of the similarities that we share is having, um, for example, gender-based violence as a specialized area and also seeing it as a cross-cutting issue that we need to work on integration through all the other sectors. Um, and then I think also around services, I think I heard that mentioned this morning, where we talk a lot about working together on referral pathways and making sure that we're including children and adolescents um, when we're doing our um, referral pathways. But there's often a lack of services. So if the services aren't there, it's hard to put together a referral pathway. And I think that's a, a great point where we could do advocacy together to improve access to services and, and ensure that there are, are services that exist. I think another thing that happens a lot in narratives is it, it comes from this desire, I think, to, to gain funding, um, which all of us always need because we know protection is underfunded and our AORs are definitely underfunded. Um, and so it's this way of presenting children or girls or adolescents or women as being vulnerable, you know, we need to help them, we need to support them. And it's true that we need to support, but I feel like it takes away the, the agency that I've also heard you talking about in child protection. You know, the, the amazing capacity of analysis that adolescents and children have if we would listen to them, not just listen, but if we would hear them and then act on what we hear and what we learn. And, and I think we all need to do a better job of of depicting that agency um, when we are putting together our proposals and um, doing a better job of, of um, fostering that agency. And, and I think, you know, between child protection and, and gender-based violence, we do have an overlap of, of the target population when it comes to adolescent girls. And um, some of you may have heard of the CASI project that we have, the Child and Adolescent Survivor Initiative. I noticed that Karina's on the call, um, but that was based on looking at, are we meeting, you know, are there, are there adolescent girls or, or children falling through the gaps between gender-based violence and between child protection? And what do we need to do to coordinate better, to have better programming, uh, to work uh, more effectively jointly so that, that we have our standard operating procedures and our referral pathways and, and doing joint trainings so that we make sure that the different groups that we work with are, are covered um, rather than saying, oh, this belongs to this sector or that sector, but really be more comprehensive and, and have stronger integration. Um, so I think I'll leave it at there. There's, there's so much uh, opportunity, I think, um, in terms of looking at how in our technical areas, we can support each other. I know there's some challenges as well. Um, again, I think Karina could talk about that more effectively than I, but I, I think sometimes we do have the challenge between what's a survivor-centered approach and what's in the best interest of the child. 
um, and we seem to have a hard time sometimes agreeing on um, certain definitions or concepts um, that we need to see how we continue to uh, work through um, using our minimum standards and, and building on each other's work as well as our specialized areas. So I'll, I'll leave it there. Great, thank you very much, Jennifer, for bringing all those uh, parallels, the strategy, the minimum standards, and, and also the CASI project is a really good example of collaboration. Um, I'm told that we are running over time, so I'll quickly go to Eric. Eric, um, there are many areas that all three sectors work on and where there are opportunities to strengthen collaboration, including those identified as priorities within the Alliance strategy. Um, which opportunities do you see for child protection to further the collaboration with protection and GBB? Right, perhaps just before answering that concrete question, I think it's, it's important to see, I think right now there is really an enabling environment to facilitate cross-sectoral efforts. Um, there is for sure a large recognition about the need to increase uh, this way of working. There is also commitments that have been done in the last five years to support uh, integrated approaches, uh, but also other agendas um, need integrated approaches to, to become a reality. If we want to work uh, on localization, community-based work, uh, nexus, uh, the centrality of protection agenda, all of these things really need integrated approach to, to work. So I think there is uh, also a growing push to adopt outcome-oriented approaches. Um, and, and, and this is really at the center of, of, of the discussions. Now, I think another important um, element on that is that we have already uh, a lot of thinking about how these collective approaches are working or are not working. I think the, the, the work, um, the yearly reports, for example, of the GPC on, on, on uh, centrality of protection um, acknowledges they, they bring a lot of elements and there is an acknowledgement that the centrality of protection is not matched by the implementation of practice. And this is something that was just mentioned now. But there are also a lot of barriers that have been already identified and that we should you know, start from there. We're not starting from scratch. We can really uh, start from, from, from there to learn on how to get away from the sectoral siloed approach and uh, investing in, in common objectives. And, and, and uh, also a, a key element is that there are so many initiatives. Uh, Jennifer just mentioned, Kazi now, there are so many other things that already exist. There are frameworks of collaboration around child protection, uh, between child protection with GBV. We are working together with the GPC uh, on accelerate, accelerating localization. Uh, we have strong initiatives and programs and the last few days we've been hearing about um, programs that are holistic and how they've been implemented in practice. We have partnerships um, that are really surprising. For example, the INSPIRE partnerships, they, they really go beyond the humanitarian sector um, with a wide range of actors behind or the PASI, the partnerships again, child exploitation as well that was presented. We have, um, well, I, I, I can think of many, many, um, Think that we already have, they're there. Now I think our uh, effort now is to scale up all this work and this learning that we have to, to, to go a bit uh, further and have more um, outcomes for children. If I, coming now to your question, Hani, quickly, um, I think we need to push together a bit more um, on, on understanding better um, context-specific risks uh, for better program design, at, especially at subnational level. And this is really key for, for all sectors, but for, for example, in GBV and child protection, this is really important. So we need to be better at, uh, at that. I think uh, we also need to be better at uh, more evidence-based programming. Uh, what worked, what doesn't work, we have been improving. And, and this is, this is really good. We already have in some areas uh, good results on that, but we need to, to continue that way in the broader protection. So we have uh, ways of measuring the outcomes and, and 
and through that better being able to construct better theories of change based on evidence. I think we also need to have better monitoring systems in place at country level. Um, and together, and this was mentioned by uh, before by Marie on, on uh, working uh, on joint community related initiatives on participation, joint assessment, all this stuff that are not you know, falling in, in category. And, and finally, I think for sure, um, we need to continue working together on resource mobilization, uh, including and um, especially for local organizations to access funding. And, and maybe lastly, to better know each other. I think this is very important because as you were mentioning, the technical areas are there, it's quite specialized. And I really have a feeling sometimes that we, we don't exactly know how to measure these outcomes, what actually an outcome, an intended outcome GBV is, how do we measure those and so on. And this is very, um, very important to move forward. So to sum up, just we have a favorable environment to push transsectoral work together. And now we have to scale up um, these initiatives. Um, thank you very much, Eric. And thank you, everyone. I'm told that I'm, we are way over, over time, which speaks to my poor facilitation skills. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mary. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Eric, um, and your respective entities to, to make the time. And I apologize, Joanna, for going over time. Um, but please continue the conversations in the chat. Over to you, uh, Joanna. Absolutely. Thank you. thank you. And thank you to all of our panelists. Um, and don't just uh, continue the conversation in the chat because we're now about to go into breakout rooms and we're going to have a, a framework for you to put in your ideas and thoughts. So um, let's keep um, some of the ideas that have come um, from Marie, Jennifer and Eric uh, in our minds as, as we uh, go into the exercise uh, where we want to capture your thoughts in something more formal than just the chat box. Um, so uh, let me look at my notes to make sure I give you the, uh, di the directors, the instructions correctly. Um, here you go, Jessica has put it into the, into the chat box. So we're going to um, put you into groups of, of six to eight. Um, you'll be moved into that breakout room. We will try to assign you by language, but if you're in a, if you're speaking French or Spanish and so on, and you're in an English room, please feel free to move back to the plenary and then we'll assign you um, to, to a room with more French speakers or, or so on. Um, so we're going to be looking at um, this, continuing to look at this theme around opportunities for the various components of the protection sector to work together. Um, and we want you to be getting as specific as possible in your discussions and in what you place on the group map. Um, you'll have about 15 minutes, just under 15 minutes to brainstorm. So we would suggest you, everybody just put up your ideas, you know, don't wait for, you know, one person to summarize them, just put them all up there. And then we're going to ask you to rank them within, within your group so that you bring the top three or so back to the plenary. Welcome back everyone. Oh, flooding in now. Great, welcome back everyone. I think that we may have cut you off in mid flow, unfortunately, because of our time, um, our time constraints, but uh, certainly the group that I joined, you know, there were quite a number of ideas and, and discussion that had started. Um, could we get the, the group or <laughs> the group map up? Thank you so much. Uh, so I think we had yeah five uh, groups um, and some ideas super. I don't know if people, um, if somebody from each group would be willing to just talk about um, their top three. I think some of you, it's quite easy. Group one, you seem to have three, <laughs> um, three points that you that you put on the board. Anyone from group one here? Group one. Um, hi, Joanna. Um, I'm happy to say a couple words about group one. So we had um, different colleagues with experience working on multi-sectoral protection. So we talked a lot about the linkages between the various protection sectors with um, education and health and nutrition. And another point that came up was also um, um, joint work with engaging um, caregivers, um, given the interventions that we target 
particularly um, uh, in CP and NGV. Um, and then we also mentioned um, potential opportunities for capacity strengthening. Thanks. Um, I see some people are bringing down their top three actions. I can't scroll. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at the main screen, so I can't scroll. But <clears throat> excuse me, if each of you in your groups, if one of you could bring down the top three um, actions um, or top three ideas that your group had into that um, piece at the bottom, we're then going to do a bit of a, a, a voting exercise in the last few minutes. Um, does someone from another group want to give us a little recap of their discussion? Teams group seven had quite a lot of um, ideas here. Um, I can I can go if no one else wants to. Jana, you know you can uh, click on that the three dots and yeah full screen each of those individually. Um, so we, we talked, <laughs> thank you. We, we talked about, oh, sorry. Um, we talked about protection monitoring being a very concrete element that can be harmonized across, across uh, the protection sectors. Um, we talked about generally to be able to do, for example, protection monitoring collectively rather than protection cluster alone or, or others alone, um, we need to harmonize the, the tools and me measurement elements like indicators. So those first two might actually be considered one action. Um, then we were talking about individual level assessment uh, of needs. So for we were talking about how a child who may be referred for a child protection issue that they may have may also have a GBV issue um, or other other protection uh, concerns, but because the sectors kind of do this independently, um, you're almost duplicating or tri triplicating. And the last one is linked to the to the topic of the annual meeting prevention. We discussed how risk factors for let's say separation or violence at home is very likely very similar or at least a huge overlap with risk factors for GBV uh, or risk factors for other protection concerns. So if we do um, analysis of risk factors and protective factors across the protection sectors, it's much, much more likely that we can pool our resources and address them and have outcomes across the different sectors rather than just the child protection outcome or just the GBV outcome. Super, thank you. Um, just again, a reminder, if, if someone from each group, if se one person from each group could take what you think are the top three points that you discussed or that have most backing and move them down to the green section at the bottom, um, because we're going to ask you to vote on your top issues. Um, does one last group want to go? We have about one minute for you to tell us about, about your chat. Uh, this is Karina here from group five. Uh, we discussed um, uh, needs assessment or, or uh, working uh, to understand the context and the needs better. And that's an area where GBB and child protection can work well together. Uh, another area, of course, is capacity development. And then um, we have the tool, the field cooperation framework, which is working on the coordination across the core functions for coordination. So that brings in from, from services to uh, working in the humanitarian response planning, needs analysis and response planning, as well as monitoring advocacy and of course, uh, accountability to affected populations. So uh, on the coordination piece as well. There's huge scope for, for collaboration. And Super. we Thank did put sharing. those in the box below. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So hopefully each of the groups has had a chance to identify their three and move them to um, the green group box at the below. Jessica, I think you need to move us over to rate, is it? Um, because now the exercise is that um, each of you have five votes where you can put a, 
a vote against one of these. Um, I'm looking to see if this, this screen is up, but one of the, the priorities that are in that green box at the bottom. Can I get that or should I? It's on, it's on right now. Excellent, okay. So each of you should now be able to vote in the right hand side. To give us a chance, uh, give us a chance to say what do you think is um, most useful for us to be taking forward. If you go to that, oops. So if you go into your own link, I think is best. If you go back to the group map link, scroll down to the green box, and as um, Jessica has shown on the right hand side, now are these little gray boxes where you can vote, and you vote for your top. So you, uh, it was supposed to be set up as a dot vote, but if you think it's we, the Alliance can make an impact, uh, that it has a high impact this topic and it's feasible for the Alliance to be um, uh, working on this in the next five years. So if I could ask you to take a moment or two a minute or two and give us your vote of the top top issues and then what we'll do is we will share the results of this session back with the plenary of today all right thank you everybody for continuing to work at this um it will stay live for a few more minutes so please continue to work your way through if you can because we're now into the break between sessions. Thank you so much again to our panelists for joining us um, and for giving us such food for thought and, and honey for facil facilitating that panel session. Um, as I say, please continue to vote, um, pop your comments into the chat, uh, and then we'll share the results back um, a bit later in the annual meeting. Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, a few minutes to break, we're gonna close out the room um, and then we'll join you uh, for the wrap up of the, um, the strategy session for today.